This week marks the 50th anniversary of Moore's Law, which is named after Gordon Moore, the founder of Intel, who said that the number of transistors, the building blocks of microprocessors, would, said the power of a computer chip would double every two years. Steve Brown is a futurist at Intel. Now, Steve, of course, the big question is, how much longer will the law hold true? Well, I've been at Intel for almost 30 years, and during that time, we've had about the same visibility of how long Moore's Law is going to go for. And I'll give you the same answer now that I'll give you, I'd have given you 10 years ago and 10 years before that, which is, it looks like it's going to go for at least another 10 years. Obviously, you, you can't cut a piece of string in half forever, but you can continue to shrink. And I think there are always going to be ways that we can innovate, continue to bring more compute power. So I think we've got a ways to go yet. Now, last year, we saw Intel spend around $11 billion on R&D, about $10 billion on upgrading factories to keep up. Yeah. Does it get to a point where spending that kind of money just isn't worth it anymore? It doesn't seem to be yet. I mean, it's a very um, economically viable business. You have to spend money to make money in this business. And it's, this is a big boy's game, right? You, you're, you're dropping multi-billion dollar sums as table stakes to even enter the semiconductor business. But if you can afford to build those factories, the economics of building bigger and bigger factories and continuing to pursue Moore's law make absolute sense. Now, as we've seen those chips get smaller, we've also seen them get cheaper. Mm -hmm. But does it get to a point where it just becomes more expensive and you have to spend more money to make those smaller chips? Well, if you're doing it in volume, then that's okay. So even though you might be building you know, a factory that costs you $10 billion that's the size of three football pitches in size, um, if you're pumping out billions of transistors a second, and, and Intel makes 10 billion transistors a second right now, and that's only going to increase, then the volume economics make absolute sense. And in the world of Internet of Things, where you're looking at every object in the world potentially being a target for Intel inside, then the opportunity to take that volume is immense. We already see, as you mentioned, Internet of Things. We see chips used in cars, air travel, um, all sorts of industries. Is there one industry in particular where you see the most opportunity for the use of these small microprocessors over the next decade? That's probably one of the most exciting things that I think about is where's all this stuff going to go? The answer is everywhere. So in transportation, you're looking at self-driving cars and inf intelligent infrastructure. In agriculture, I mean, look what's happening in California right now with the drought. Using resources more effectively and doing farming more effectively to produce more food, you're going to need technology throughout that to make the, the field smart so it can tell the farmer, where do, where do I need watering, for example. So it, I don't think there's any particular sector. There are some that have been lagging historically, so healthcare is lagging for, for good reasons because of you know, FDA approvals and that sort of thing. So there are some sectors that are a bit behind on technology adoption and they will race forward. Retail, education, healthcare are three great examples. But I think you're going to see this stuff just go everywhere. Steve, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. My pleasure. Nice talking with you. That was Steve Brown, a futurist at Intel in New York. I'm Ruben Ramirez. Thanks for joining us.